Well, I'm almost there. Um, there's still one more Christmas tree, several wreaths, and some ornaments. Um, almost ready to pack them away. Not quite there. Um, there you know, the, the, the snowmen will stay out till Easter. Um, the uh, reindeers always stay out, and the frosted trees just uh, feel like part of our home. Um, but, you know, in, in all the busyness of the season, and all the excitement, and all the getting ready, we, we have this ability to forget that we're still waiting, that we're still waiting for Jesus to come. We're still waiting for Jesus to come. You know, we get so caught up in Christmas and the baby going to come and the wise men showing up and, and all the gold and all the pretties and the lights that we forget that we're still waiting for him to come. We're still waiting. Still waiting for some answers, for something to change. And then we find ourselves on this other side getting ready for everything to get packed up and put away. And, 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 and what's really changed? We're, here we are again, same, same old us, same old people all around us, same old situations that we were dealing with uh, before Thanksgiving, uh, same old, same old, um, same old voices. Um, and, and, and the not-so-heavenly chorus is starting to tug on us all over again. You know, we've got to get reports done. We've got to get some new tax information filed. We've got to, we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to. And so we wait. And, and here we are today. Um, and we're going to celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Because the gospel always has good news. There is always a piece of shiny, bright good news for us. On a Sunday morning, which when I got up was not so bright and shiny. It was kind of blustery and cold and dark and, 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 and hard to see. And not anything was uh, plowed out at the time. And, 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 and so... As I was making my way here, thinking about would anyone come and, and would anything be changed, and, and all I could think of was a God who can make all things new. So I want us to go there. I want us to be amongst those people who are walking down out into the wilderness to be there with John because they were so excited. They didn't know what they were really going to get to encounter when they got there, when they got there. But they had been hearing all these stories about this guy who was down at the river. And this guy that was down at the river, he was just rocking and rolling and he was making a whole lot of noise and he was yelling at people to repent and turn their lives around. They were getting dunked in the water and they were being told that the Messiah was coming. Get ready. And everybody, their hearts were thumping and something new was going to happen and they wanted something new to happen. They wanted to be excited. They wanted to be jazzed up about something new, something vibrant, something to change their lives. And they were willing to do anything. So what if the Jordan River was murky and dirty and yucky? They didn't care. They were really ready to be dunked because what he was promising is when we dunk you in and you come up, there's going to be a different kind of life for you. Something is going to change. Now, I grant you, the Messiah that they were waiting for was not the Messiah that was the one that was going to show up. The Messiah that they were waiting for was the Messiah that was going to come on a big old horse and he was going to change things, knock down the Roman government. Their lives were going to get easier. The food was going to be better. The oppression was going to lighten up. You know, life was going to be good. And then this really humble guy kind of, walks over real close to John. And John recognizes he's the one. And he says, whoa, no, you don't need to go in the water. And Jesus said, oh, yes, I do. See, because he always came for a purpose. 
And the purpose was to save us. But the way he was going to save us was to show us how to be saved. He wasn't just going to just kind of say some stuff, sprinkle some pixie dust on us. He was going to literally show us what it would look like. He was going to get into that dark and murky water, and he was going to come up again. So what did it mean for Jesus to be baptized? Because we knew he, he had no sin. So it wasn't about cleaning his sin. It was to show us that we needed to go, to, to be willing to let go of all of that, that that weighed us down and to come up anew and, and to a, be born into this new life. But, but what was this mark that was left on him that would be left on us? What was this connection with God that was going to be left on him that was going to be left on us? And, and that mark, that sign was the sign of God's favor, belonging to God's family, that never would Jesus be left alone. That, you know, immediately from wet and all, being swooped up into, into that desert, and, and for 40 days and for 40 nights being tempted by the devil, he didn't have a moment, there was not a moment where there was any in-between time to get all ready for it. He was there, and, and he was not abandoned. And that was the promise for us. You know, when we, when we give ourselves, when we become part of this family of God, when, when we are marked by God, chosen by God, and, and claimed to be the beloved, it, we're not alone. The promise is good for him, and it is good for us, that forever we'll be together with God's people, with God. And so whatever happens to us, and, and some unpleasantries of major proportion happened to Jesus, but he was not alone. The Holy Spirit was with him and fortified him. And, and when bad things happen to us, we're not alone. The Holy Spirit is with us to fortify us and, and to make our spirits able to endure. And, and not only our spirits able to endure, but the Holy Spirit empowers our sisters and brothers in Christ to be standing beside us so that, that we not only have the spirit within us, but the visible presence of God beside us to, to empower us to just, you know, hang in there and, and be strong and, and know that God loves us and, and that, that we are worthy and, and it'll be okay. And so with this mark of the Holy Spirit and, and this mark of baptism, what is it that we're supposed to do? And, and we see it, you know, get baptized Get tested and go out and serve the world. Because he never had a minute to take a vacation and say, well, cool, baptism party, let's party for several days. No, it was, this is it. This is the gift you are given. You are called and chosen and cherished. And your blessing is that you get to serve the people of my creation. You get to go out and be in ministry to the world, to everybody, the people you encounter. And, you know, some of those people aren't going to be so awesome. Some of those people are going to be like that murky water that you just got dunked into in the Jordan. When we get sent out into the world and we wonder how come, you know, like we're doing this hard work and, and, and we're serving other people and it's just not that pretty. Yeah. That's what ministry is all about. It's, it's the world out there isn't that all sparkly and pretty and clean, and it's okay. Because we're going out by the power of the Holy Spirit to, to do the work that God is calling us to do. And, and whatever that work is, God will enable us to do it. There's a reason why this morning you were handed the serve brochure. And the reason is to remind us that in a little while when we remember and we reaffirm our baptisms, we recognize that when we are called into the family of God, we are called for a purpose. And we are called to live out our lives, which are lives of ministry and, and partners in stewardship of all creation. God calls us to be partners with God, to care for all that God has created. And, and in order to do that, the people of God have to step up and go out and do something. Now, you may open up that brochure and you might find four things you're already doing. We know you're doing them at school. Think of the things that you're not doing or something that God's calling you to do that may not be on the list and write it down. And, and some of you will say, you know, nothing seems to fit. 
And I'm going to tell you, you were blessed with a pastor who is a dream factory. I love to dream. <laughs> and I swear, I can come up with ideas for you. If you don't have an idea of something amazing for you to do, believe me, I have seven. Um, there is always something that God is laying on my heart for this faith community to do. And I just have to reserve all my enthusiasm. And, and, and sometimes you'll hear me like drop little things into conversations because I'm just always just seeing like who might be the one that God is ready to take on this new exciting adventure because God is a God of new opportunities. And we had that whole conversation about, you know, going through new doors because God is always opening up new doors to us. There's always the next new thing for us to do. There are people all around us who do not know the saving love of Jesus Christ. How do we breathe when we get up in the morning, when we know that? They don't know that there is a God who loves them, and they're sitting at home thinking, I'm all by myself. Nobody cares. And we're sitting here thinking, who are you? We want you to come and be with us. So recognize, if you don't know what God is tugging on your heart to do, I want to help you. Um, there are spiritual gift inventories that I will help you work through. There's opportunities to meet with me for counseling, to do the work past the spiritual gift inventory. I'm working with some people already. I will lead some spiritual gift classes if you want to do it in a group setting. Um, there's this form. There are opportunities for us to continually engage in the life of the community here and beyond our doors because 2018 is a year filled with hope. God has placed within me an excitement that I don't know where. I keep telling Chris and Cherry, I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm just like a buzzing on fire. I am so excited for what God is doing. And the joy that is within my soul is a joy I want to share with each and every one of you. And I don't want it to be put out because there's no reason. Because we have a God who is good and a God who is loving and a God who cherishes you, and a God who wants our best good and the best good of people that you don't know yet and I don't know yet, but wants them to come and explore what it means to be chosen and cherished. In a few moments, I'm going to invite the ushers to come up and, and to take up our offerings. And then shortly after that, I'm going to um, invite you to come up and to reaffirm your baptisms. Um, no, no, that the God who opened the heavens because he looked down and saw his beloved son is the God who would open the heavens for you because when he looks down and sees you, he sees his beloved. Amen.